Mueller. Um, I'm teaching consumer behavior, and as all my lectures are in English, I also give the Schnupperfallesung in English. <laughs> <laughs> so just a few words about myself. I'm, uh, as, I, as you can see, I'm teaching consumer behavior. Uh, I'm teaching things like um, social psychology, cognitive psychology, um, consumer analytics, and uh, statistics. So I get to do all the fun things here. <laughs> and uh, my background, actually, is uh, in brain science. I'm actually a brain neurophysiologist by training. I've got a PhD in neurophysiology. Uh, then spent a few years in management consulting and also founded my own business. And um, one thing I want to also tell you with this lecture and I wanna, want you to take home is that a lot of the research that we do and a lot of the uh, teachings that we do are not really that limited to just one subject. Right? So as you can see just from my background, um, as I have a background in, in neurophysiology, um, now I'm teaching at a business school. This is not, not untypical that you switch careers or that you keep on developing in your life and um, go on to do uh, different things. And so also today's uh, topic will be called anchoring from perception to business applications. So we'll do a little bit of perception and we'll see how that um, relates to to the business world, and what we can actually do with that in the business world. So now you might wonder, okay, now uh, this professor showed us uh, some, some, bizarre, some bizarre example from perceptual physiology, what does that all have to do with business and what does it all have to do with the business school? Well, I'm showing this for a specific reason. I'm showing this because it illustrates a very, very general principle of our minds. If you get used to George Bush, the more will look like Kerry. If you adapt your visual system to Kerry, your brains will perceive Bush in this face. And this fact, this fact that whatever we see and whatever we perceive and how we process the world is very, very predetermined by what we have seen before, it's not just true for faces, as in this funny example, it's also true in business. I'll tell you a little story about that. Why? When you will see um, why this is so important. So, uh, many years ago, my cousin visited me. And my cousin um, came with a new business sweater. And a new cashmere sweater, and I commented it and I said, oh, that's a nice sweater. Um, where'd you get it from? It said, yeah, I got it, and that's new. Um, and it was a bargain. So literally, he said, um, this war a Schnäpple. <laughs> so he said, yeah, well, that's, that's great. I, I got it for just 250 euros. I was like, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, did you win the lottery, or <laughs> how do you think this is a bargain for 250 euros, a sweater for 250 euros? is not a bargain. What happened? He had gone to some good store looking for cashmere sweaters. And the salesman, who seems to be a very good salesman, he brought a cashmere sweater. And my cousin tried it on, and he loved it and wanted to buy it. Until he looked at the price tag and figured out this was a Prada sweater, which was 800 euros. So fortunately, he found the Hugo Boss sweater for 250 euros. Here you see how, how closely interlinked the different disciplines are. How, when you study psychology, how important that is for business and how important it is for a business person, for example, to know psychology, for example, also to know math and uh, to, to know how to, to run, for example, um, business and psychological experiments. First of all, Let's look at how anchoring works for prices. So, if we think about a new product, let's think about a new product that nobody knows what it's for. Okay, um, in my lectures, I like to give the example of the freezer wave. 
A freezer wave is a reverse microwave, right? A microwave makes things hot very quickly. A freezer wave makes things cold very quickly, right? You put things in a freezer wave, and um, in a few seconds, you'll get, I don't know, frozen coke or something like that. Good, so what is the value perception of a freezer wave if here we have the amount of people, frequency, and here we have price in euros? So, generally we have, to, we have to understand that nobody here knows how much a freezer wave would be worth. Maybe as much as a microwave, maybe as much as a, a, a fridge, or maybe more than a fridge, maybe five times the amount of a fridge, who knows, maybe less than, less than a microwave. So, we have some people that um, have very low value perception, and they say that they give us very low price, a low, very low willingness to pay, and we have some people that have very high value perception, a very high willingness to pay, right? So, in other words, people are all over the place with their price perception. Now, if I give you, here's again price in euros, here's again frequency, the amount of people, if I give you a piece of information that, for example, says, well, this freezer, uh, you know, to, to, to build this freezer wave and to uh, add a significant margin, you're going to end up at 120 euros. Here's 120 euros. What is the distribution of people's value perception going to look like? What is that distribution going to change with the information that it should be costing 120 euros? Okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm asking now, and then I'm asking people in the first row here. <laughs> they have already studied some, some semester. What's it going to look like? Well, the price going to be higher. The perceptive price. Higher? Then, well, I mean, you know, first of all, you know, some people had a very high value perception, some people a very low value perception. So what's going to give the, the information of 120 euros? What's going to happen? Yeah, I mean, I mean the value. clustering around, yeah. right? So it's... it's, it's so it, it, it people are going to have many more people are going to have a value perception around that, right? So now people are not saying anymore, well, this thing is 5,000 euros worth because, um, because I gave you the information that it's worth just 120, right? So if I want to make a lot of money, which information should I spread? Yeah? Is it small or Yeah, how much is it worth? I don't know, 500 euro. 5,000 maybe. 5,000? Right? 5, well, this oh. is worth 5,000 euros, right? Which is what, what, um, what Apple did every time they launched a new product. Um, so, and what is going to happen with this distribution? Yes, exactly. It's going to shift, shift over. Maybe it's not going to be up at 5,000. But it's going to be up at, I don't know, maybe a thousand or so. And if you sell this thing for 120 or if you sell it for a thousand, it's a big difference, right? It can actually make or break your business case. Let's go back to, to our favorite um, everyday example, the bar. So scientists did the following. Scientists sorted beers in a beer bar, a beer bar that had 13 different beers. They sorted beers from low to high and they sold it beer from high to low. The average sale on the low to high, obviously you see those are exactly the same beers, the average sale from low to high was 7 point, uh, sorry, 5.78, 5 and the average sale from high to low <coughs> was 6.02. So signif it sold significantly more. And why is that? Why is that? Yeah, you have one answer? Um, I think because uh, beer one is the uh, most expensive beer and people think that the best beer is the uh, first beer is probably the best one. So they buy uh, beers that's high up in the chain. 
Yeah, but if you think about what we've just learned in terms of anchoring, how about anchoring is fine? I'm, I'm not sure about your theory. It could be, but, but what we've just learned about anchoring, why, what does that have to do with anchoring? Yeah? Right, so what do people do when they look at the menu? They don't start down here, right? They start up here, right? You read, usually tend to read a menu from top to bottom. And when you start at a $10 beer, well, at some point, you know, the $7 beer looks really cheap. When you start at a $4 beer, the $7 beer here looks really expensive. Yeah? So whatever you see first has a strong influence on what you see next. And you can actually see it really has an impact on your bottom line. Yeah. With that in mind, I have a practical question. Uh, when you're online shopping or something, yeah. why, with that in mind, yeah. why do they still have the filtering option from low to high and don't have it as a standard that the highest price yeah. should be the first price yeah. to see? Or why? They, they didn't take my psychology class. <laughs> <laughs> so. With this, I would like to conclude and I would be uh, happy to welcome you after this very, very hot summer. <laughs> and, um, and uh, you know, when you, we've had a hot summer, you know, I can tell you that the fall will, look, will appear uh, significantly colder and that's just because of anchoring, because of anchoring <laughs> in, hot, <laughs> in hot degrees. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, I'll be around today, and uh, I can tell you from my side, it was one of the best, my best decisions ever uh, to come here and join this great team and join the great faculty, um, and I enjoy every day I teach with students. So um, awesome. I hope I welcome you after the summer. Thank you. Thank you.